Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Monday morning mountain weather update. I want to go to Whistler Blackcomb first up there in BC where we've got snow coming down. This is part of our storm system that's moving into the Pacific Northwest and will eventually move south into the inner mountain west, Idaho, Utah, Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado. But great to see that snow coming down up there at Whistler this morning. There it is on the snow stake, snow falling. Snow all the way up to 7,000 feet up there in the Glacier Express as well. All right, let me just take a look at radar this morning. So there is your precip up there in the Pacific Northwest. You can see that happening. And there is a little bit of a Vanguard precip starting out ahead of the storm, uh, moving into Nevada, a little bit of light precip into Idaho, Utah. Um, but the main storm is going to take its time as it moves in. So let me give you the lay of the land. Here's the, uh, the water vapor satellite imagery. So oranges and reds are your drier air aloft. And your moistures and your whites, your blues, here's our area of low pressure. You can see it's pushing this, this band of uh, light precip out ahead of it and a little bit of moisture. Uh, but the main storm is going to track down and then kind of hook its way through Wyoming, kind of straddling Wyoming and Colorado, um, and then moving out. And there is energy behind it. There's an area of low pressure up here which will come in behind this storm system and keep the flow active. Um, and it actually, it looks really interesting down the road. Um, here are my bullet points. So, storm system, uh, basically today, tomorrow, and through 1030, through a lot of the Intermountain West. There are two additional storm systems. The second storm is weaker, faster, and mainly affects the northern tier. But then the third storm, there we might see a merger. I mentioned this yesterday. The low is going to go really far to the south and almost get cut off from the main flow. And as it starts to come back to the north, there's going to be a cold front simultaneously that comes south, an Arctic front, well, a Canadian front, um, that comes south. And the two might actually merge over Wyoming, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico. It's way down the road, but it's a possibility. So the key dates for snowfall right now in the Wasatch are basically this afternoon, tonight, and tomorrow. Again, some snow at 11.3 and 11.5. The Tetons, it looks really light. Anything that falls today is very light, even tomorrow, 1029, light accumulations, probably one to four inches of accumulation. So those numbers have trended down just a little bit. Uh, but then you could see additional accumulation late 1031 and then again on 11.5. In Colorado, um, your best snow timeline is this afternoon, tonight, tomorrow, and 1030. And then again, another shot of snow potentially with that merger on 11.5 and 11.6. So we'll look at all that in the forecast. Here's the time height forecast. Uh, of relative humidity in the atmosphere, you know, all the way from the top of the high peaks through the top of the atmosphere, so all the vertical layers. And this is snow mass, snow mass ski area in the West Oaks of Colorado near, near Aspen and Buttermilk and the Highlands. You can read the timeline at the bottom from right to left, and it's basically a 72 to 80 hour forecast from this point forward. So you can see it's dry now, but the moisture increases in green on the 29th. 30th stays pretty uh, moist on the 31st, and so we're going to see some nice snow production during that three-day, that two and three-day time period between the 28th and basically the 30th, and maybe even into early 31 on its way out. So we've got action ahead, we've got snow production, and I think that when you look at some of the bullseyes for Colorado, I think the West Elks, that's one of the bullseyes. So snow mass, um, you know, all the way back to Capitol and uh, a lot of those 14ers in there and the Maroon Bells, you got Conundrum, uh, the very highest of elevations of Bell Mountain, Aspen Mountain, um, Chair Mountain, all the way down to Crested Butte. I think that that area could do very well uh, with this initial storm system. Here's the jet stream forecast. Close of business today. You can definitely see the trough, the area of low pressure, diving to the south here by late tonight. And then tomorrow, it's moving its way. Uh, let me um, start this over. There it is. There it is tomorrow. And then that storm on 1030 would just be exiting Colorado late in the day. So let's move this ahead. There's 1031. Fast moving storm system runs through the northern tier. It's almost hard to see. It's very fast and it's weak. All right, here we are in 11.1. Now look how far south this third storm digs. It's all the way down into Southern Cal, the Baja, and it may even go further south. Here's 11.4, all the way down into Mexico. Then it makes its move to the north, into New Mexico, Four Corners, Colorado. At the same, same time, look at the northern branch opening up. The two 
it could actually bring that in and phase it in as part of um, the cold front. So it would become one storm system on 11, 5, 11, 6. Look at the 11, 6. So the whole thing starts to tilt. Um, let me put some precip on all this. So we'll look at the forecast radar and satellite. By 5.30 this afternoon, again, some disorganized streaks of precip over Colorado and Utah, but things will be uh, solidifying and, and filling in here. So there's a 10.29 in the morning at 5. You've got snow from the Tetons, Big Sky, Wind Rivers, High Uintas, Wasatch, all the way down to Bryant Head and snow through, and there you see it, the, the couple of bullseyes, the West Elks all the way down into the San Juans. Um, the storm gathers, gathers some strength here on 1029 in the afternoon. Now, the track primarily favors Wyoming, but there's going to be wraparound snow over the top of potentially the high Uintas brushing the Wasatch again and running down over the mountains of Colorado. Now, if Denver sees anything, it's going to be a brief rain-snow mix late Tuesday into Wednesday and a temperature drop, a sizable temperature drop. The track of this is just not conducive to anything major for Denver and I-25. All right, here we are on 1030, leftover precip over Wyoming, Colorado, and then it exits after the afternoon. Look at the storm in the northern tier. That's that weak second storm. It's, it's very fast through the Pacific Northwest, Idaho, Montana, B.C., and Wyoming. And then that fades. Third storm drops to the south, way down into southern Cal and Mexico. And then it finally starts to reemerge. And look what's happening here. So you've got the cold front coming in from the north, you've got the low coming in from the south, and the two will phase over the four corners, Colorado, New Mexico, Wyoming, and parts of Utah. And then look at that, by 11.5, um, we're looking at a, a pretty widespread area, potentially, of snow, maybe even snow in Denver by the time we get into 11.6. So that's a very interesting end to the time period. Here's my latest snow forecast through all of today through 10.30 all of today through 1030. So mainly this first storm system. You can see the bullseyes in Colorado across the West Elks, Crested Butte, Snowmass, very high up in, in Aspen on the mountain. You know, a lot of those high peaks, the Maroon Bells, Castle, P Pyramid, Conundrum, all of those high peaks are going to get nailed. Um, and then down into the San Juans, we could see a foot or more of accumulation down there. Now, right around I-70 and north, less accumulation, anywhere from probably three to six inches, three to seven inches in a lot of those areas. Um, now, Utah's interesting. I've got eight to 10 through a lot of the ski areas in the Wasatch. I think that's pretty fair. I think the high Uintas could do a foot or more. And I've taken the numbers down slightly in the Tetons, knocked those down and some pretty light accumulations for BC and beyond. All right, second time period, 1031 through 11.6. This accounts for two additional storm systems right here. Um, let's start from north, from the north, and we'll go south. But BC, some good numbers up there, uh, anywhere from potentially 4 to 12 inches in a lot of places. Pacific Northwest, Washington, Oregon do well with a foot or more of accumulation. Anywhere in pink, purple, is over a foot of accumulation. Brundage and Schweitzer, 9, 10 inches. Some decent numbers there through western Montana, 4 to 8 inches across the Tetons. And even a little bit of accumulation here for the Sierra because that third storm goes so far to the south, it does run its way through the Sierra with some light accumulations. Now in Colorado, this assumes the merger of the cold front coming in from the north and the low coming in from the south, but we could be looking at 4 to 12 inches, maybe even more because anywhere in pink here is over a foot. So it really just depends. Do we see the merger or not? And that could benefit northern New Mexico as well, more so than even what I'm showing here. Um, so some impressive numbers in, in not only the uh, second period, but also the first period. So we'll go back. You can see the numbers all of today through 1030. And then again, here's the second period, 1031, Halloween basically in the first week of November. I, I had a feeling, a uh, pretty strong feeling, that the first week of November would be active, and that's exactly how it's, uh, it's playing out. So there you go, guys. Thanks for tuning in here on this Monday morning. Always appreciate it. Take care, and have a great day.